What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, Crown Tundra DLC video. Basically, this video is going to be me going over uh, this new item that I I'm sure you guys have all heard of it, the Ability Patch. Uh, they announced it officially. So the Ability Patch is essentially an item that uh, allows you to bring out the hidden abilities of your Pokemon, and through data mining, uh, it's been revealed that it doesn't work in the opposite direction, so we're not going to get like No Guard, uh, Fissure Machamps legalized, like they're not going to work. Uh, so it's, it's one way, you can give your Pokemon your hidden ability, I would prefer both ways, but I can see why they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, in the Crown Tundra you get you may get new items called Ability Patches, they're hard to come by but worth the effort. If you use one on a Pokemon, its ability will change to its species hidden ability with an Ability Patch and helping handing a Max Suit, blah blah blah. Basically you can make fully competitive Pokemon out of your favorite old Pokemon, which I'm excited about um, because, you know, I have some Pokemon in Emerald I'm actually going to transfer up because we all know some Pokemon are coming back. Uh, and I have some memories of those, so I'll be using them in tournament. Uh, but what I want to go over today is the Pokemon that will actually benefit from having their abilities legalized in VGC. So I will be restricting this only to the Pokemon that, um, the legendary Pokemon that we know are returning and uh, the Pokemon that have not had their hidden abilities officially released as of yet. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, go ahead and leave a like on the video. Let's try to shoot for 150. I'd really appreciate all the support you guys have given me on the channel lately. And yeah, uh, yeah, uh, basically, I've said yeah like three times. I'm only going to be doing Pokemon that I expect to be legal in the next VGC format, which um, they've announced the rules that said certain legendary Pokemon are legal, which is essentially the, their way of saying it's the VGC 2018 rules. No Kyogre, no Xerneas, no Evoltal, yes Heatran, yes Zapdos, yes Landorus, that sort of thing. So. This is actually pretty interesting. What I want to start out with, I don't know why I put Heatran first. Uh, I want to start out with the Fossil Pokemon because they're actually probably going to be the biggest benefactors of this um, of this update. So Dracovish and Dracozolt had, they were both used pretty consistently. The Dracos were very good uh, because they had Strong Jaw with Ficious Rend and Bolt Beak respectively and Hustle also on, on the Dracozolt. But Ficious Rend doubled in power because Dracovish or Dracovish was typically choice scarf and would go first. It would get a 50% boost from stab. It would get a 50% boost from strong jaw, uh, and that was a devastating move. It was very easy to one shot many things in the game. Uh, now, essentially, Dracozolt it, its biggest downfall. It's like well, I guess it's mediocre attack, but that doesn't really matter when you have one move that does disgusting amounts of damage. Its biggest downfall was its speed. 75 is not that high even for this format. It's going to be even lower in the next format. It now has Sand Rush along with its buddy Dracozolt, they both get Sand Rush now. So what I've done here is I've built a hypothetical Sand Team uh, for Dracozolt and Dracovish. Um, basically, this is what I expect to see on Sand Team's next format. I don't think Excadrill is going to be all that common because there are so many checks to Excadrill coming in the next format. It already, it already didn't do too well against Rillaboom. Um, Tapu Fini is coming in the next format. Incineroar is still here. Landorus is here, which is honestly the biggest Excadrill check of all time. So this is what I expect Sand Teams to kind of look like in the next format. You're able to run a... It, it, it's strange. It's, it's a Sand Abuser that is not ground type, which we had that with... We had that with a Pokemon before, I think it was Stoutland, but Stoutland was pretty mediocre compared to this thing. So now, because you have the ability Sand Rush, you're going to be double speed under Sand. You don't have to run a Jolly Nature, you can actually get away with an Adamant Nature. You can also Choice Ban this thing since what other move are you going to click? You could also give a Life Orb if you really felt like it, uh, but I feel like Choice Ban is going to be the go-to. So now, you can actually click Ficious Rend with an attack boosting nature and pretty much outspeed everything in the format given your sand is up, which is crazy, especially with the dynamic speed mechanics, how it'll recalculate the speed tiers mid turn. You can switch in your tire, you can lead like Dracovish, Landorus, and then you can just go for a Ficious Rend on your opponent's Pokemon thinking that, oh yeah, I have a Scarf Pokemon, I'll outspeed it. Uh, but then you just switch in the Tyranitar, doubling your speed, scoring a free KO. This thing is nasty. This thing's going to be so fun to use. I think this might be the first team I build in the next format because it just seems so reliable. Dracovish Sand Offense, that's going to be gross. Uh, and the reason that like Sand Teams benefit so much from it is that when you were using Tyranitar and Excadrill in the previous format, you were weak to opposing ground types. Ground types were the bane of your existence. Landorus Therian would be the bane of this team's existence if it weren't for Dracovish, which can easily one-shot this thing even at minus one. Uh, on top of that, if you know if you want to predict a switch in, actually it wouldn't even matter. There's like no reason to run Ice Fang. 
I was gonna say you can run Ice Fang to catch it, but like Vicious Ren does way more. It's so gross. Yeah, I, I think Dracovish on Sand is gonna be probably one of the biggest benefactors of this update. Dracozolt on Sand, uh, on the other side of the coin, it's still really, really good. Once again, it's the same deal with double speed. However, you have more moves that you can click. Since this thing tends to run Hustle, uh, it's a good Dynamax option. And now you have the immediate speed boost. Uh, with Like, you can Dynamax and still be fast and everything. You no longer need to Tailwind turn one. You can, like, lead Tyranitar and be immediately threatening. So, because this thing has Hustle, it's already disgustingly powerful. You can go for Dynamax, Max Wormwind with a Life Orb and Hustle, do disgusting amounts of damage. You no longer have to run Jolly because you're so fast in the sand. Uh, oh wait, I'm dumb. You're running Sand Rush. <laughs> uh, you you now are still, you're not as strong. Um, just ignore that, I was having a brain fart moment. You're not as strong, you know, you have Sand Rush instead of Hustle, but you're still a good Dynamax target. And on top of that, Bolt Beak is really good. You have 100% accurate Bolt Beak, which is essentially the trade-off. With the Life Orb, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. I guess the difference between Dracozolt and Dracovish is that if you're running Dracozolt in your sand team, you could run both, to be honest. You could run both on the same team, it'd be really good. If you're running Dracozolt in your sand team, you're protected against water types like Tapu Fini. Um, you, you have a better time versus those, which are really difficult to deal with on sand teams. Uh, but if you're running Dracovish, you have a better time versus ground types and rock types, which you already dealt pretty well with rock types, but now you're safe versus Landris. I think Dracovish overall is the better option. You could even like slap both of these things on the team and it would still be nasty. So yeah, I think they're both really, really cool. Uh, and I like them a lot. I think that they're going to be super solid in the next format. Arctivish and Arctazolt. These guys, eh, <laughs> they're, they're kind of iffy. Uh, they both got Slush Rush, which they have the same moves as Dracovish and Dracozolt, but the damage output's so much lower because they don't have those abilities that'll boost the, the damage of them. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit sad. So now the damage is similar, I guess, because... You're both coming off of like base 9, everything is coming off of either base 90 or base 100 attack. Um, and now that Dracovish might run Choice Band over over Strong Jaw with the Sand Rush ability, Arctivish can do a similar thing. It'll run Slush Rush, and if you slap a Choice Band onto this thing, uh, it's going to be relatively strong. And I feel like on Hail, it'll make Hail somewhat more viable, but Hail is never going to be the most viable thing you can run in this format. You can Choice Band this thing. You could definitely choice ban this thing. Ficious Rend is a very difficult move to switch in on. Uh, and, you know, you could run Adamant Nature. I actually did some math. Um, Adamant Arctivish with max speed at level 50, if uh, it's got plus two, like with Slush Rush, it'll actually outspeed Jolly Max Speed Dragapult, which is in like the upper echelon of things that are fast in this format. So, yeah, uh, it has pretty decent ways of hitting the things that Hail teams don't want to deal with. Hail teams are notoriously bad against uh, fire types. Uh, fighting types, etc. Uh, Arctivish does get a couple of tools to deal with that. It does get Psychic Fangs, it does get Ficious Rend, which is honestly the biggest thing. Having a water type Hail Abuser is really, really big for Hail. You're able to hit things like Incineroar for a one hit KO, etc. Uh, that's really it though, like that's where it ends. Same thing with Arctazolt, except you're going to be spamming Bolt Beak more than anything uh, with Slush Rush. It might be viable. Hail teams didn't struggle too much with water types, while water types do resist ice moves. A lot of Pokemon like Alolan Ninetales are notorious for running freeze dry, but I suppose having an electric type hail abuser is a really interesting plus. It doesn't it, it really doesn't help you hit much more though, because you're hitting water types for super effective, which you're already capable of, and you're hitting flying types for super effective, which you already hit with the ice type. So Arctazolt, you can probably put it on like a, a hyper offensive sand or, or hail team. Um, but I really don't see how this is going to be the best way to run a team. I, I think that they will work, but they're not going to be as reliable as like these disgusting sand offense teams. Uh, so yeah, with with those Pokemon out of the way, we can actually get into the legendaries. Heatran, while, while Flash Fire is pretty good, you're able to switch in on and benefit from uh, fire type attacks. You essentially gave all your fire type moves like a choice specs uh, if you switched in on a fire type move. That was really good. It was it was really gross and a very good ability, along with the fire immunity. I feel like Flame Body actually is going to be a decent ability for it. It's it's so good. All right, here's why. Here's why. Heatran already very very defensive. 91 HP, 106 defense, 106 special defense. That you already run these things typically pretty bulky. Uh, leftovers is a common item for them in previous formats. However, uh, I think that you're more inclined to run it in this format because you can actually use this thing 
as a way to check physical attackers. Let's say that there is a fake out user in front of you. Uh, let's say a Rillaboom wants to fake out your Pokemon. You can switch in this Heatran, and now every time they make contact with Heatran, physical attackers have a 30% chance to get burned, which is huge. I, I feel like a lot of people will stick to the tied and true uh, flame or flash fire, but I think flame body is a pretty good ability for it. It doesn't really change the way that you run it. You might just be a little bit bulkier, uh, but really, yeah, like that's that's it. Like I feel like it's a nice ability for it, a nice little option. More than anything, it's just a nice option. Next up, we have thunderous, and this thing is going to be gross because you have to predict on team preview: is this thunderous special or physical now? Physical Thunders had been used in a previous format, um, 2016 you saw it, sometimes you would see it in 2019 occasionally, but now it's so much better. So Prankster Thunderous was already notorious for spamming Thunder Wave, uh, Taunt, and just being able to hit things with like Nasty Plot Thunderbolt. Uh, it, it was a very strong attack. You could, you could get away with running like Thunderbolt and Protect, you'd be fine. I believe it also gets Grass Knot. Yeah, it does. So it, it's a very strong special attacker. 125 special attack, 111 speed with a life orb. This thing is going to be really, really gross. However, now you could run Defiant. And before, before, you could like lead Incineroar and fake out this thing and feel safe about that. Now you can't. Now you cannot. Because let me show you what Defiant Thunderous is capable of. It is probably one of the most threatening, the most threatening Dynamax targets in this format. Because if you run a Jolly Nature, Max Attack, Defiant, Life Orb, you can actually do this. One of the few flying type moves this thing actually gets is Fly. And while Fly isn't very strong without the Dynamax option, it turns into Max Airstream. This thing also gets Wild Charge, and I believe Thunder Punch, but I think Wild Charge would be the, the more optimal option. It gets Protect, and you can also run Super Power. This is a very threatening set. This is a very, very threatening set because if you try to lead off with an Intimidator that's like your fake out mon, whether it be Hitmontop or Incineroar or Scrafty, any one of those really, really good leads, you're gonna give this thing plus one. And then it's gonna steamroll you with Life Orb Max Airstream. It's gonna steamroll you with Life Orb Max Lightning. It gets Max Knuckle. It's such a strong option. And the fact that Team Preview doesn't tell you, it, it hardly tells you anything about how this Pokemon is going to be run like you have to look at the team and kind of infer which kind of thunderous it is that is so threatening and i'm really excited to run defiant life orb thunderous same goes with tornadus however while tornadus does have the same stats it doesn't get electric moves and it would run something along the lines of like i guess you could run like acrobatics right um but fly is stronger as a max move uh it does get some better options with flying moves but if you're running a physical one I'd say you're better off just going with the special attacking Thunderous. Uh, it definitely enjoys the Prankster more because Prankster Tailwind is really solid. I, I think that the Defiant is a nice option for it, but you're going to be more likely to see Defiant Thunderous than uh, Defiant Tornadus because the Prankster is just is just way too good on, on Tornadus. Having such high speed of a Tailwind, having priority on Tailwind with those dynamic speed tiers, it's going to be so good. But yeah, um, next up we have Sheer Force Landers, which is... I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. So, some people are scared of Landorus Therian. I'm more concerned of Landorus Incarnate. It's a faster Pokemon, and while it might not hit harder initially, you may think, it now has the option to run Life Orb Sheer Force. If you don't know, if, you're, if your move gets boosted by Sheer Force and gets the secondary effect um, nullified in exchange for the, the Life Orb boost to the 1.3 times power, you don't take the other life orb damage. <laughs> you don't take either one, so you can hide a life orb on this thing. It's pretty obvious if it's sheer force. Um, if you're running a Landorus that is not Therian, it's, it's going to be sheer force in this format. And here's why. I think special attacking Landorus is going to be a bit better, uh, but you might run physical because you do get better flying options. Like, what are the flying options here? Literally just fly. You might run physical, uh, but I think special is better. Earth power is really, really solid. Uh, you could actually run Mix now that I think about it. Mix Landers wouldn't be bad. Uh, you have Rock Slide, which is really powerful coming off of this thing. Um, you have a couple other things. Psychic. Psychic <laughs> gets the Life Orb boost. Uh, it gets Sludge Bomb with a Life Orb boost. It gets so many things with this Life Orb boost that it's so difficult to just switch in on. It's it's like a Nido King only stronger. Nido King did the same thing. It did the same thing except it had Stab on its, um, on its Poison moves and it also got Ice Coverage. But this thing is gonna be so difficult to switch in on. You could use you could use freaking Iron Tail if you wanted to. It's not accurate, but still, it's it's such a strong strong Pokemon, and I'm I'm really concerned about it. I think Life Orb Landers is gonna be really terrifying in the format. However, 
you know, Lander's Therian does have more immediate damage, um, but I, I feel like it has more value overall because of the Intimidate and stuff and the added bulk, but I think that Life Orb Lander's is still going to be a major threat in the format. Now, all the Tapus actually got the same hidden ability in Telepathy, but I think the only one that's truly going to benefit from it is Tapu Fini. Uh, the reason being, Tapu Coco, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Lele, they're going to get access to Grassy Glide, Expanding Force, and Rising Voltage, which we all know those things do disgusting damage in terrain. Tapu Fini's terrain is the most expendable for Telepathy. Um, I suppose this would be useful for running something like a Bulldoze set. Like, on, your partner could go for like Bulldoze, he could go for Earthquake, you can run a lot of things with it, and Tap Affinity just wouldn't take damage. There aren't too many things that are really good with this. I suppose maybe... Ooh, actually, there is there is one combination that's going to be really threatening. Uh, and that's actually going to be... <laughs> this is a throwback to people who played tw uh, VGC 2019. Choice Scarf Soak. So Tap Affinity gets Soak, which turns your opponent into a water type. Pure water type, they lose all their other typings. You can pair this with Electric Terrain Tapu Koko and Discharge. Telepathy will make it so your your Misty Terrain will never override the Tapu Koko's Electric Terrain because uh, it doesn't exist, and you also won't be hit by your <laughs> by your partner's Discharge. So you could spam Soak and like Choice Specs Discharge, and it would do disgusting amounts of damage. If they switched in an immunity, it would not be an immunity the next turn; it would just be weak to it. So I could see this thing possibly being used, but beyond that, Tapu Fini might prefer the Misty Surge. It's definitely a better Misty Surge user than Weezing. I, I can guarantee that, guys. Once Tapu Fini comes out, Misty Surge Weezing is going to be in the ground. Like, no one's going to be using that. Zapdos. Um, probably the one with the most beneficial hidden ability of all the legendary birds. Static. It's like Flame Body, except if you make contact, you might paralyze it. That's really it. Zapdos is already a pretty bulky Pokemon for VGC. Um, it didn't... I mean, pressure was cool, but it's definitely going to be running static in this format since you have the option to paralyze Pokemon that try to fake out you. Uh, on top of that, Zapdos is getting access to like Hurricane and Thunder in this format, so it's you're going to see it a lot. I think Zapdos is going to be really cool. Not much to say beyond that. Uh, Moltres getting Flame Body. Same thing as Heatran, except this thing is a bit more frail. <laughs> it doesn't have the uh, it doesn't have as high of defenses, and it's also got a worse typing. So I think it does benefit from that. Like you. Why would you run? Why would you run pressure when that's an option? Articuno as well um, did get an ability, but it was uh, it was um, what was it called? Hail Veil, Snow Veil, something like that. It's it's the it's like Sand Veil but for Ice types. I forgot the name of it. It's really lame. It just increases. It's like a Bright Powder. It's a Bright Powder. So your opponent has a chance to miss each hit on you if you're in Hail. Don't run Articuno with that ability. It's it's annoying, <laughs> but I suppose it is optimal on a Hail team. Entei probably one of the biggest buffs on this list. If you don't know, the ability Inner Focus was buffed in this um, game. It now is also immune to Intimidate, rather than just being immune to Flinch. So Entei can run something like a Choice Band set. And Entei also gets Acris, <laughs> Acris, access to Sacred Fire. Choice Band Sacred Fire is a devastating hit, because it has a 50% chance to burn, it's Stab, it's a physical move with 100 base power. You could also run Flare Blitz, but I think Sacred Fire is going to be a little bit more more popular for the chance to burn. Um, this thing can run like an adamant nature, max speed, and just not being able to intimidate this thing, not being able to burn it as well. This thing can't be burned. There is literally, the only way you can lower this thing's attack is like with charm and max wormwind. You can't intimidate it. Intimidating is the most common way to lower attacks. Burn is the second most common way to lower attack. It's immune to both of those things. So it's gonna be a really powerful attacker. Sacred fire, um, I believe it gets, what's the fighting move it gets? Rock Smash. I could have sworn it got something different. It doesn't get Earthquake. It has pretty poor coverage in that sense, but it does get Extreme Speed. It does get a couple of things. Iron Head is interesting. Stone Edge is nice. Um, I, I just feel like a Choice Band Entei is going to be a really difficult thing to switch in on. Stopping Tantrum, that was the move I was thinking of earlier. Um, it it's going to be a really powerful Pokemon. I, I feel like it's better than Entei was before. Just the fact that it can't be Intimidated is a really huge thing. That's literally the only buff that matters here. Um, next up, we have Suicune and Raikou. They're just not able to be intimidated or be able to flinch. I don't think that matters too much for either of them. They're going to run inner focus most of the time, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think it matters too much, though, for them. Like they, Just the fact that they're special attackers, being intimidated immune isn't as big. Regirock actually gets Sturdy. Pretty big ability. I, I think Clear Body might be more common. However, Sturdy is interesting in case you want to go for... I don't know, just a set that doesn't get one shot by like a, a max, 
a max overgrowth or something. Not much to it. Uh, I think it benefits a little bit. Clear body, clear body. They switch to ice body. Uh, ice body is interesting. You essentially get leftovers in hail. Not too useful for Reggie Ice because it's or Reg Ice because it's it's bulk is great on the special side, but you're gonna be hit by steel moves and rock moves that are super effective and are typically physical attacks. So I, I don't think it benefits too much. If you're running Reg Ice, it's probably a mistake. Uh, and light metal, pretty useless in the Dynamax format. Pretty useless. Uh, you essentially get the base power of low kick and other weight dependent moves cut in half. Uh, nothing really too big for the Reggies. Uh, but that's it for the Pokemon that I believe will be legal in VGC 2021, hidden ability wise. What Pokemon do you think are going to be benefiting the most from these hidden abilities getting released into VGC? What Pokemon are you the most excited to use? Go ahead and comment them down below. Every comment helps out the channel a lot. Go ahead, turn on notifications, subscribe to the channel. We've been growing like crazy recently and I really appreciate all the support guys. Join the Discord, do whatever. But yeah, with that I'm going to call it guys. Have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.